Lord is the King of Apostles.
Loving God, who gladdened us each year with the feast day of the apostles Philip and James, grant us through their prayers a share in the passion and resurrection of your only begotten Son, so that we may merit to behold you for eternity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you are one God forever and ever.
dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when I say praise be Jesus Christ, the answer is now and forever. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Three reflections I share to you. First reflection, the readings. So beautiful are the readings today on this solemn feast of the two apostles, Philip and James. Second reflection, the apostolic church. What does it mean to be the church apostolic? And third, to be formed once again at the feet of Mother Church so that we become bearers of the great tradition. First reflection, the readings. The readings speak of the two testimonies. The first reading speaks of the most ancient of all testimonies about the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus is handed down from one generation to the next. But the origin is the fact that the witnesses themselves share the faith from one generation to the next. And here in the first reading, we listen to how beautiful in symmetric form the witnesses share the faith, shared from one person to another. The second reading, which is the Gospel, speaks of Philip. In his testimony that his encounter with Jesus brought him to a deeper understanding of who the Father is, the Father who cannot be seen can now be seen in the face of Jesus, the face of mercy. These two readings become the pillars of today's celebration. Testimony of his resurrection and the testimony of who the Father is. Second reflection, we are an apostolic church. What does it mean to be an apostolic church? The word apostolos comes from one who is sent. We are an apostolic church because our faith rests on the testimony of the witnesses, of those who have seen the risen Christ. If you read really ask the apostles, there are two criteria by which became the standard of choosing the replacement of Judas. What are these two criteria? First, the first criterion is that this person should have been part of the public ministry of Jesus. Second, is that this person should have been a witness to his resurrection. That is why St. Paul falls short of one criterion. He was not part of the public ministry of Jesus. If not, he was the great persecutor. But he defended his apostolic office in the two letters of the Romans to the Galatians and also the Galatians. But what is important is this, Philip and James were there all along. During the three years of public ministry, they were witnesses to the Magnalia Christi, or the great deeds of Christ. That indeed, here is God working in us, with us, and through us. We are an apostolic church because our faith rests on those who have seen the risen Christ. That is the apostolic testimony. Because we believe and behold that it is these witnesses for the past 2,000 years have grown strongly in the hearts of people everywhere. And we in our country have been recipients of this testimony 500 years ago. An apostolic church. That is why uh, being an apostolic church is one of the four marks of the church. One holy Catholic, apostolic. These are the four pillars of what it means to be truly the true church of Christ. Third and last reflection, to be formed once again. And I thank the Christian brothers, I thank this Venerable University of De La Salle for being host to this formation of the bearers of the tradition because I call you bearers not simply those who will 
catechize or supervise or administer. I'd rather think of you as bearers. Bearers that need to go back to the womb of the church. Because we need to go back to the womb of the church time and time again. And you know the challenge? is sentire cum ecclesia to think with the church to think with the church and to have that great love for the church the church that is found in our particular churches two brother priests here come from two particular churches Lipa and Balama and you represent particular churches and the beauty of the particular churches is that the one holy Catholic and apostolic church is present in these particular churches, presided by the bishop who is successor of the apostle. That is tradition. You know, there are two concurrent programs running now under headship. The other one I attended yesterday, I was the first speaker. The other program running now is at St. Paul's University, Manila, at the back of this university. It's a program that we set up in CEAP known as the Certificate in Catholic School Leadership. You see, a good number of school managers and school administrators do not have a background of the philosophy and spirituality of Catholic education. They run schools without any sense of what it means to run a Catholic education institution. That is why there are some schools who run parallel with diocesan programs and do not have any connection with parishes and dioceses. Well, we set it up. And this is our, I think, our eighth or ninth year. Yesterday, I was so surprised. Why? Without even doing promotions, we had around 68 participants from schools all over the country. In other words, there is a greater interest that schools would want to connect once again with the church. That these Catholic schools, especially congregational schools run by sisters and brothers, are more aware now that they do not exist in a vacuum that they need to connect with the bishop, they need to connect with the education office, they need to connect with diocesan priests. But it is no longer the era of Lone Rangers. That these congregations are not multinationals. There's a greater awareness indeed that it is the church that we love, it is a church that we must serve. And it's running now, they're on their second day. And it is grace filled that in this year of the parish, as communion of communities, then a son, under the auspices of the Episcopal Commission of Catechism and Catholic Education, began this program for you, catechetical directors, coordinators, as well as catechists. For the sole purpose that indeed training and formation are essential ingredients of pioneering efforts in the catechetical field, that we need to think outside the box, that it is not business as usual anymore. Why? Because the world has changed. Well, the message is the same, Christ yesterday, today, and forever. The ways in which Christ yesterday, today, and forever will be preached and packaged is so different now because young people, families, are different now. Thus, catechesis is more challenging. I'd like to present to you two predominant philosophies of the times that need to be challenged by us. Amen post-modernism, and post-truth. The word post is very important. Post-modernism and post-truth. Post-modernism is the umbrella of religious indifference, modern-day atheism, 
free thinking, marginalizing the church, the lack of a sense of love for the church and disdain of anything Catholic. And that's the predominant view today. On the other side, there is what we call post-truth. Actually, that is the new Oxford word. Post-truth. And post-truth is not given to objective rules and regulations. It's not so much concerned about surveys, but it's concerned about what? Authenticity. The people believe you because you are authentic. What you see is what you get. They don't like publicity. They don't like hypocrisy. Challenge for us in this formation? Enter the mind of the young and enter the mind of the church and find ways once again that as much as Philip and James of ancient church were able to package the gospel so well because of the witness of their lives. In a world that persecutes Christians in the first century, can we say the same thing today? That our life will be truly really well spent because our life is so given to making Jesus known and loved. Well spent. Yes. Rest? No. The catechist never gets tired because the catechist is always on fire. There is no vacation for us. So if at the time next, the others have been here since last week. that he will do his 21st century animation. <laughs> Why? Because the essence of good that he gets is, is when people experience joy. A sense of belonging and a passion for mission. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God must be telling us something, actually, when our director, Dr. Lysander, chose these dates, I was so impressed by the fact that the whole day is a day that began with Philip and James. Actually, they're not known. They're not known. Philip is not that well known as compared to Peter, James, and John. And James is, of course, the less compared to the great. That is why Mother Church had to put their feast in one day. Philip and James. But it only shows who we are in front of the Almighty God. We are nothing. And God is everything. Our work will continue and our names will be forgotten. But the story of Jesus needs to be told and retold. By people whose lives have been touched by happy face, whose understanding of Christ came from us. Dear brothers and sisters, my request, patience and perseverance. Why? Great effort for my brother priest. All twelve of them, I am told. Twelve. Twelve priests in this program. Twelve. No Judas. <laughs> this is what I call the reconstituted twelve with Matthias. For priests to stay here for twelve whole days without escape. <laughs> must be a moment of truth. Amen? Sabi ko nga sa sarili ko, dahil sa daw kanina na holy, na holy hour na ako eh. Sabi ko, pag tumagal yung labing dalawang pari niyo ng labing dalawang araw, malapit na ang parang
Rusia.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings we bring for the feast day of the Apostles Philip and James, and bestow on us religion pure and undefiled, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. Look with favor on the oblation of your church 
in which we show forth the possible sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And granted by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having been called us to the table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Luis Antonio our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. In the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the Apostles, Philip and James, and all the martyrs, Saint John Baptist and the Son, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and many, many years. Oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Jesus Christ, to save your apostles, peace I give you, my 